It's a full body workout, man. Like it yeah, is crazy. Yeah. And I, yeah, I know you're full on good burner. Oh man, because I, I didn't I wasn't thinking about really using my feet so much. Like I was just it was I should have yeah. done I thought of like after the fact people were like, Oh, you should have blah 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 but just mainly just upper body and I was kinda trying to grab all my legs. I mean it would have been great if it was like, okay, first one up wins for the team, then yeah, I'd have been yeah, the coolest yeah. dude in the world. I'd be Kenny and West by myself, which I technically did anyway. Um or Kenny West and Ty for the second time. Leave that in. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I'm going to list two, two people, and I want you to pick who you would choose as your partner. How about Carly and Siobhan? Carly and Siobhan. Uh, <laughs> why would you put that? I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Charlin Centric. This is Daniel, and I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Brandon Nelson. Uh, he's been a part of the show for, I believe, five seasons, and he needs another shot at the challenge because we need to be more Brandon. Um, this is interview number two, and I'm so ecstatic that you know you actually give me a chance to further my YouTube career in the challenge community by actually, you know, sitting down taking his time out of his busy schedule and actually doing this as well. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Welcome to the show. Oh, man, thank you for having me. You know, like I said, we were supposed to link up a little while ago. Things got a little hectic, you know, <laughs> work, kids. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I'm glad we finally got the link up, man. So thank you for having me. Yeah, man, and you spoke about kids. Uh, you have two children, right? Yes, my son, he'll be four in August. He lives in, uh, oh, in, wow. uh, in California with his mother and then uh, my daughter's here with me and my wife here in Las Vegas. Ah, okay, okay. And you're married. So a husband yeah. and a father. So so honestly, how how is fatherhood and how is married life like? Uh, you want the honest answer? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I want no. the honest answer okay. Well, I mean, if you know anything about me, I'm going to shoot it to you straight all day yeah. anyway. Um, no, it's actually... Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, it gives you structure. It gives you something to to wake up to do every day because, you know, I like yeah. to, I'm a people pleaser uh, to a fault. So when I have things to take care of, especially in my family, it gets me up in the morning, you know, no matter how bad I feel, um, I still got to get up and handle business. You know, if it, when it was just me by myself, um, you know, I could get away with doing, you know, F boy stuff and, uh, you know, not really work. <laughs> not really worrying about much and just, you know, worried about, you know, how much money I'm going to make and, you know, if I'm going to go gamble, if I'm going to go out to the club, little stuff like that, stuff that doesn't really add up. I mean, it's fun still, you know, every now and then. But um, as you can hear my daughter screaming, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, but, um, yeah, family life is good, man. Uh, it gives you structure. It gives you, uh, you're not just wandering around, you know. So for me, that really helps me out. Yeah, man, and I, I respect that. I respect it a lot. But... Obviously, we're hit with COVID nineteen and you know, all of that. How how did it affect your family, and how did you cope with it? How did you deal with it? You know, how are you still dealing with it in terms of jobs? You know, making sure they're secure and to the back and forth. Yeah, I mean, um, it affected my my wife more than me. Um, I mean, to be totally honest, I mean, some people might have a a way to think about it. It really didn't affect what I was doing anyway. I mean, I'm a worker. I, I can't, I gotta, I gotta be doing something. I gotta be figuring out how to get money. Like I, I you know, whether it be a, a, a bad choice or a good choice, I'm gonna at least explore it to see how can I better our situation or how can I better my situation to make our situation better. So I never stopped working. Uh, now there were some times that my job was affected by COVID where we wouldn't be able to go in for a certain amount of days if somebody was exposed or, you know, things like that. But me personally, it didn't really affect me. Uh, the only thing, the biggest thing that I noticed is just how, um, how people were when I was outside the house. Like, um, you know, because at work, you know, you have to wear a mask. Uh, it's policy and you, we want to protect ourselves as well as others. And then you got to deal with the people, the anti-maskers that are, you're just a sheep. Why are you listening to the <laughs> like 
Yeah. It's like, yeah, I got a job to do, lady. I'm not trying to have this conversation with you. What would you like? <laughs> you know, are we going to do this? We're doing this? Yeah, what are you doing? Know. So I think that's that's the only thing that really stands out. But as far as how it affected my um, my life and what I do day to day, me personally, it really didn't change that much. I mean, yes, of course, I was a lot more um, aware of, you know, keeping things it's clean around the house and I'm not shaking hands yeah. with everybody and all that good stuff. But for the most part, Hey, I was just working and working. So. Yeah, man. And you live where exactly? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Okay. So are the measures as strict as opposed to other states or, or not? It depends. It just depends on where you go. Cause I mean, um, Vegas is a hustler's town anyway. So, I mean, you have these, businesses that will say yeah we're gonna we're gonna abide by the mandate and then they'll still do their thing you know what i'm saying they'll still let people come in take their mask off whatever they're just trying to get money um it is a little bit more lenient some people do look the other way uh as opposed to other states uh so it's not as strict even though we did on the news it'll make it seem that way but it really ain't and then uh i think we're supposed to open back up fully on june the first so We'll see how that goes, but I have noticed that we, they've been like releasing little parts of the city to be fully open at full capacity and stuff like that slowly but surely. So every morning when I'm going to work, because uh, it takes me about 25 minutes to get to work, I'll notice the traffic increase. That That's how I know uh, people are going back to work and really, people yeah. are coming into the city. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's good and bad because I'm not really just like cool with everybody just jumping back out and being like, oh, let's go to the pool and let's go to the, like, nah, <laughs> like, like yeah, I'm stay home, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, okay, yeah. you did say that, yeah. you did say that it will start to reopen June 1st. Actually, I was kind of in the valley decision of actually making a, a parents trip to, to Vegas. So uh, for people who want to come to Vegas, like what can they do? Like what fun activities, um, can they do that? Well, I mean, you know, we're, we're known for the club life. When I first moved out here 10 years ago, uh, my first job was at a small little um, boutique lounge. It's not even it's not even open anymore, but it was at uh, the Luxor Hotel and Casino. And it was called Cat House. And then uh, the owner owned that lounge, and he also owned Australia's Thunder from Down Under, the male review show. And I worked the door for that one because it was like uh, right across the carpet to um, the Excalibur Hotel. So I would do that. Um, and then I got to meet a lot of people that I moved on to work the Tao group, which is Tao, Lavo, and Marquis. So the club scene is going to be the club scene. I mean, if you want to spend a few grand for just a couple bottles of Sky Vodka and sit in a corner and, you know, blow your money and you look cool and have the girls walk over with the little the, uh, the sparks and all that good stuff, be my guest. Uh, Las Vegas is uh, ready and willing to take your money. But as far as, like, just having... Uh, like a good time. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that's off the strip. You know, we have the Neon Museum, downtown. Is, downtown is super cool. I stay closer to downtown now. Um, super cool. Fremont Street is super cool. You're going to run into a lot of locals. A lot of people will tell you that have only been here once, like five or six years ago. Don't go downtown. It's a totally different yeah. scene from when I moved here 10 years ago. Because, I mean, when I first moved yeah. here, it was really sketchy. Um Downtown is cool if you want to get like some real authentic Vegas type stuff. Uh, more of the locals stay in the downtown area, closer to Fremont. Uh, there's a lot more security. They clean it all up. It's now uh, they call it the Arts District. So uh, okay. that gives you. It's more of like a um, artsy emo kind of vibe, which it, but it's not too okay. over the top. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Still cool. And then of course you got all the strip clubs and all of this stuff. But it just depends, <laughs> what you got. depends on what you want to get into. What you want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I like I like more so like outdoor activities and stuff like that. So I, I kind of glimpse online where you guys have like, I don't know, you do like um off-road stuff. And then yeah. that was like the kayaking type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to Lake Las Vegas at the kayaking there. They have these tours that'll take you out to the Grand Canyon. It's gonna take you a little bit to get there, but they'll they, they make it really convenient. They have a uh, horseback riding trails because I mean Vegas is small. It looks big on TV and in movies. Vegas is very small, but they uh, but once you get outside of actual like the the nucleus of it, which is just going to be the strip, 
uh, once you get off the strip. I mean, there's a lot of cool local things to do, like ATV riding. You can get out to the desert. You can go up to Mount Charleston. You can go to Red Rock Canyon, which isn't too far from here. You know, go on a hike. Great uh, uh, opportunities for picture taking and selfies and all that good shit. Um, yeah, man, uh, you can do, uh, you can go skydiving. Actually, for my, um, I think it was my 31st or 32nd birthday, uh, I um, went and learned how to fly a plane. So, you know, and that's just in North Vegas. Like, yeah, you know, you can go do that. Helicopter tours. Uh, they got hot air balloons because, you know, it's just open everywhere. Once you get off the strip, it's just open everything. Like, there's nothing outside of the strip. Like, it's just wow. desert and, and mountains. So they got a lot <laughs> of stuff that, uh, yeah, if you want to get into that outdoorsy stuff, man, there's a lot of stuff you can get into. That's cool, man. I know you said that it was a small place. How small is it? Because I'm actually from a place. I live in Nassau, Bahamas, and that we're literally 21 miles by seven miles. So <laughs> talk about small, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Las Vegas Boulevard, I mean, I'm not sure of actually how long it is, but when you, if you're coming in from LA, like once you hit, uh, once you see the welcome sign, that's basically what people yeah. think Las Vegas actually starts. But the crazy thing is, Las Ve like the strip, the big part of the strip, Technically, isn't even Las Vegas. That's not wow. even that's, that's not even the city of Las Vegas. Las Vegas, the city starts once you cross Sahara, and that's when you're getting more into the downtown area. That's where uh, that's after you pass um, Wynn and Encore and the Venetian and all that. Once you get past that, and going north on Las Vegas Boulevard, that's actually Las Vegas. That's where oh, okay. Old Vegas was built from the north to the south. Everybody thinks it's. You know, but they think about it backwards. It's like, okay, if all the old hotels are downtown, where do you think it started? So, you know, people are crazy. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, <laughs> so I would say it's probably not, it's probably not even, you know, 20, 30 miles, the actual strip. And then everything kind of goes off to the east and the west of it. Um, but yeah, so the actual city itself is, is, is not that big, man, especially if you work in the industry, is what we call it, uh, when we start working for the yeah. clubs and the restaurants that are closer to the strip, you are going to be one person away from knowing everybody else. Like, if I, do you know someone that worked over here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause someone, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it's, and then they, they know all about your business. They know this is a good thing about being yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that way, anybody, oh, I, he was with, oh, he, she was with, like, nah, bro. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> not at all but but okay man it sounds like you've been situated though a pretty pretty good amount of time so you kind of know the ins and the outs of you know, what's happening there. So it's good to have good knowledge man but okay so i want to take it all the way back to what kind of catapulted you into i guess where you are now and what you did during that span of time so Basically, you're the new kid on the block, and you don't know what will happen, um, but you seem ready for whatever. And I'm speaking about your entry coming into freshman two. So what was it like? How was the weather? Seeming how you guys were down? Um, it was kind of a weird setup because going into freshman two, um, I had no idea that, uh, that I was even going to get put straight into the challenge because I was supposed to be on the real world Cancun originally. So oh, okay. when I did my original casting, cause I'm from Arkansas originally from uh, Jacksonville, Arkansas. And um, I, I was a big fan of, um, of real world growing up. And I got on the MTV website and I saw that they were doing an open casting call uh, in, in Little Rock of all places. I'm like, cause I thought I was at the sendings and before we had to send in a tape and do all that. And I was like, I don't, my attention span is like that. So I was like, I'm not finna sit down and do no tape or nothing like that. But luckily they had uh, a casting call in my city. So I went down to it, I killed it. Um, it's a long process. So they, they'll, they'll you know, take you back in like a group of eight. They'll ask you all these questions and whatnot. And then I was the only one they picked out of my group. Um, and then they'll call you back the next day because they're still there. Then you'll have a one-on-one -on -one with a producer and a camera. And then they'll let you know like a couple of weeks later. So it's like, you just sitting there all anxious, like waiting to see, you know, are they gonna call me, they're gonna call me. In the process of that, I ended up losing my job because I called out to go do the uh, casting. And I had a great job too. I, it was at, uh, the, it, was at UA, it was at UAMS. I used to be a social worker, a case manager. 
pretty much the same thing at uh, University of Arkansas for medical sciences. So I had a really good job and they were like, you don't have any more. Yeah, they were like, you don't have any more uh, time off. And I was like, I got to go do something. I didn't tell them what it was. I was like, but it's an emergency. And they're like, yeah, OK, whatever. So I took those two days to go do that casting. And then I got I got back to work that next Monday because it was on a Friday and a Saturday. I get to work on Monday and they're like, yeah, we just need your, your paperwork uh, for the last couple of cases we did and your laptop because, uh, yeah, this is going to be your last day. I was like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't care because I'm going to get cast on the real world anyway. <laughs> But as we know, that didn't happen. Um, so anyway, fast forward, I go through the whole casting process. They flew me out to LA like a couple months later. I got to meet everybody with the Beat'em and Murray Studios. Every, everything was cool. Did an interview with them. And then they flew me back. And then like a month later, they give me a call. And they're like, we're sorry, we're going a different direction with this season of uh, Real World Cancun. But we'll keep you in mind. Just, you know, I'm like, I'm crushed at this point. I mean, I'm jobless and now my ego is shot because i was telling everybody yeah i'm gonna no so uh then i started working for verizon i was doing tech support for verizon so fast forward like six months later i get an email and it's from beautiful and murray and they're like hey um we've been trying to contact you apparently your number changed which we, we need you to give us a call back asap and i'm like all right so i literally stepped away from my cubicle went outside called them back or whatever. And they were like, yo, so we're going to do, uh, have you ever seen the challenge? And I was like, yeah. You know, like, would you be interested in being on that? And I was like, yeah, I'd be interested in, yeah, of course. So a couple more talks, a Skype interview later, um, I'm on Fresh Meat too. And when we get there, everybody was kind of disappointed because everybody that got cast, the new kids that got cast, um, we were expecting, because you know, the challenge is always in another country. So we were like, oh, we're going to get to fly somewhere. It's going to be dope. It's going to be this, this, and that. And then we find out we're going to Whistler, which is a little bit north of uh, Vancouver in Canada. And it's like, it's still North America. We get there and everybody's kind of like, ah, right, whatever. And then the other twist was, as soon as we get there, they make us stay in a tent for like five days. We don't know what we're going to be doing. No, nothing. Like we literally stayed in an army tent for five days in the middle of a field. Then they make us do this little combine thing. And then... Everybody shows up. The uh, what was it? Danny and Kenny and Evelyn and uh, Jen and everybody. So you're seeing these people you've been watching on TV for years. So I'm kind of like, all right, cool. Now it's real. You know what I'm saying? So um, after that, man, it's, it's got real cool. Um, you know, my 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 first partner was Caitlin, who's arguably one of the worst uh, challengers in the history of the challenges. <laughs> um, Great person, great person. And she, even if she saw this, she'd laugh too. Me and her are cool. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but it she's she's super okay. cool, nice person, super intelligent, super intelligent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, just didn't work out for me. It could have, we could have flipped it and it could have worked out for me a little bit better because everybody would have felt sorry for us. Like Wes even told me, he was like, dude, because she got hurt or whatever, which is why we had to end up going into elimination. And that's the whole thing where I drank a beer right before actually it was more than yeah. one they just showed me drinking one and that's why they said we got disqualified but i was like i know we're going home this don't crutches like we're, <laughs> like, we're not we're, like what are we doing right now like we're not sure to no, i'm gonna get drunk and go back to sleep so uh but no it was a super great experience but i thought that was gonna be the only one like i really really did not think they were gonna um bring me back because i really didn't get to do anything on my first season and yeah. then I, I tell you what man the craziest thing the because I had set up like a little premiere party back home in Arkansas, even though I was only going to be on for like three episodes. But for the premiere, I was like, yo, you know, my people's coming through. I had this little bar downtown. They just going to hook me up. I'm like, all right, great. Everybody come through. We're going to you know, film it. And this is and that. The morning of the premiere of uh, Fresh Meat 2, and it was on a Wednesday. I remember it was on a Wednesday. I got a text from one of the producers yeah, saying, hey, Send uh, say confirm right now because we need to get casting done. We want you for the next season, which was cutthroat. And I just I mean I hit I hit yes like 15 million times on my text. I guess yes. <laughs> so now I'm getting <laughs> up to I'm like yeah I'm like, let's go. I'm gonna go to my premiere for my because you know we had already been back in the states for like three months before the actual show premiered because that's the end of everything. Good. Yeah, And then I'm like, yo, so I'm going into the premiere. Like, I can't say nothing to nobody about the new season. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm in there now. 
So, yeah. And then everything after that, man, was just uh, just a blessing. But I really, like, after I got shut down for the real world, I thought I was done. Like, I got shut down for real world after making it so far in the casting. Then I get fired from my job. And I'm just like, yeah, that was a waste of time. And then, you know, here we are now. <laughs> so. <laughs> but in the beginning stages, uh, you, you mentioned, you know, seeing all the candy. Uh, Wes, Jen, Paula come in, and none of them chose you. How did it feel? How did it feel being the second to last guy being chosen? Did you feel as if your times were way more impressive than you know the other guys? Why weren't they picking you? Like, well, Jen, Jen put. After the fact, because me and Jen are real tight now. Like we got, we're not yeah. as tight, but we were super tight. Like right afterwards, she came out to Vegas a couple times when I first moved out here. But she t- she pulled yeah. me to the side and she told me that the biggest. Re- so she she said she wanted to pick me, but when we did like the combine numbers, of course, Nora had the best ones. But I was I was half assing it uh, for the combine because, um, I mean, I've I mean I've always been a pretty decent athlete. I mean, I played D one football for like a hot second, but like coming up through school or whatever, I, I mean, I was the guy, I was captain of football and basketball in high school. I, you know, yeah. whatever I did, I was, if I, if I wasn't like, you know, number one, I was in the top five. So, five, to not yeah. get, but to not get picked, you know, like until like second to last, I was kind of like, well, damn. Um, and then, uh, but it's, it's my fault as well, because I kind of half assed it through the combine because I, I saw where it was going. I was like, all right, they're going to mark our times and stuff, and we're going to get picked. And I was like, if I've been watching the show the right way, which clearly I haven't because I <laughs> haven't won one at all, but I said, if I'm watching the right way, I don't want to be number, the first round draft pick because now i got a big ass target on my back. You know what I'm saying? So I, I kind of was like, all right, I'm just going to do 10 pull ups. I'm going to kind of, you know, halfway do my little 40 time. I'm going to do this, do a little cut you know, just stay in the middle of the pack. And then as the challenge yeah. goes on, then maybe I can figure some stuff out. But that shot, Yeah, that shot me in the ass. But Jen told me, she said, after the fact, it was like halfway through the season, she was like, I really did want to pick you. She was like, uh, but Nora's um, numbers are better. And she's like, and what you had on when y'all standing up there, it, you looked like you were fat. And I was like, what? Because I had on this uh, big uh, camo jacket. I had on some baggy pants and, She's like, it looked like you were. She's like, you looked like you were out of shape. You looked like you were fat. And I was like, she's like, I can see now you're not. <laughs> I was like, yeah, my bad, but okay. So yeah, I got I got to choose my wardrobe more carefully moving forward, I guess. But honestly, like baggy clothes, a lot of especially like black men, like I was like the thing back in the day, you know. Yeah, everybody that's what we just did. Wearing, like, the, the clothes, so it was like that was just yeah. the style. So yeah. so yeah, but. I guess that's what she thought about it. I think I know the, the answer to this question, but do, but do you wish you had a different partner? And if so, who? Um. Well, I'll answer it this way. I'll say I'll say no first because I feel like if okay. she, if Kate, I feel like if Caitlin hadn't have gotten hurt, we could have lasted a lot longer in the game because at that point, the way Kenny and Wes were playing it. They just wanted to carry weak people as far as they could to the end, which I'm not saying I was weak, but collectively our team was weak. And they saw that in Caitlin. And then even Wes told me, he was like, dude, you're good, but Caitlin is trash. But at the same time, tell her to stop with this what I'm hurt thing because y'all can make it pretty far if she'll just shut up about how hurt she is all the time. So I'll say no first with the contingency of Caitlin not being hurt. Uh, but yeah. If um, if I had to say, uh, yes, I had a different partner. I probably would have. I to be honest, because you know, oh, uh, here's the thing: Jeanne was supposed to be uh, on that season as well. Um, oh, to to pick people, uh, but she apparently something went on with her passport or something like that. And she could make it. That's why Evelyn replaced her. That's why Luke didn't have a pro- he didn't have a, a partner to the the like till we got to the house, and they said we're bringing somebody in for you because you know he was last pick. So it was like, 
Uh, but he wasn't yeah. picked. Like, he didn't have anybody to pick him. So then Evelyn comes in. So I would say I, I would have flipped it if I would have loved to have been last pick because I would have had Evelyn as a partner. So, yeah. Uh, Evelyn and Brandon Perrin, listen, I would have been, whoa. That would have been top three. I think that would have been a top three team. And it would have been straight. How, yeah, like how the season was was going, it was like Kenny versus Wes. So if you weren't under the umbrellas of, I guess, one of those camps, then you were a lone wolf. Like Brandon was kind of, not Brandon, Landon was kind of a lone wolf in yeah. the season. But if... Indirectly, who do you think you would have gravitated more towards in terms of an alliance between Kenny and Wes? Uh, I mean, definitely Kenny. Definitely Kenny. Okay. Just because I think our personalities are a little bit uh, more aligned than myself and Wes. I mean, I can see wow. a little bit in both. Um, you know, Kenny. Kenny's cool, man. He, he likes to have fun. He's a uh, yeah, you know, he, he's a, he's a very a social guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With Wes, Wes is um, you never know with Wes. I mean, I got to know him a little bit better moving forward, but we were never like super okay. close, so I don't want to, you know, right. build that false narrative or anything. But um, yeah. Wes, Wes, you never know. Like when the game's on, you don't know if he's being your friend because he really likes you, or he's being your friend because he wants to use you. So I don't yeah. like that part of it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think Kenny, Kenny's more of a, a readable person to where it can be like, all right, you know, you can tell when he's, he might be, you know, f***ing you over. Um, but with Wes, <laughs> you just, yeah, with Wes, you just never know, um, because he's just real, and he's just a little bit too much for me. Well, he's just always like, and he, he, he now this is just, I'm talking about that season. This has been a decade ago. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah, people change, but it's more yeah. of a, um, a strategic move when it comes to him uh and i i don't i yeah i probably would have been like really off put by that because i know like if just tell me that you're going to be using me as a chess piece and by the time we get to the end uh if you need to play your part or whatever and i got to go into elimination i don't give a f about none of that as you know i mean i've been in um, i don't know how many uh but at the same time don't be don't treat me like you know, like Brad did on um, Cutthroat, and be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, you're great, you're great, yeah. you're great." And then, and then when I see when I when I see the final edit on the back end, you're like, "Yeah, you're new. You gotta earn your stripes. This this ain't no renter friend. You know what I'm saying? Blah blah." But then when we in the room, y'all like, "Yeah, man, we get out of here, man. We gotta link up. Give me your information. We can blah blah." I'm like, man, kiss my yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, to answer your question, yeah. I probably would have uh, I would have rocked with with Kenny. No, no. Um, no shot on West though, because I mean he's a beast yeah. and his numbers speak for themselves. But yeah, Absolutely. just on personality alone, likeness, I probably would have uh, gone with Kenny. Okay, cool. So which guy or guys did you consider like your biggest competition in the in the house? Uh, on first freshman week two, and, freshman and that, yeah. Uh, biggest competition in the house on fresh meat two. I mean. You, I mean, you, I mean, you got to go with, you got to go with Wes. Uh, no, no, you got to go with Wes and Landon. Landon, uh, he just, he just, he just does work. Like he's not, he's not about all that. You know, let's sit around and talk. And can, do you like me? Can I, can I have you? Got, you, you got my back. I got your back. And I'm down the road. I'll, I'll figure something out for you and all that big bull. Uh, he just does work and he's just consistent. So he probably would have been, you know, uh, number one going in. But, you know, just with the personality and that caricature of these people that you build in your own head before you even get to meet them, uh, it's Kenny and Wes. Like, they tip the chat. That's why everybody was like, oh, what are they going to do? And those new kids are kind of like, um, so what's next? So, um, yeah. But, I mean, Landon, like, just straight up, Landon was, was probably the person I was like, I don't want to have to deal with him. Um, but luckily, it was a partner. Um, challenge because you know had it been something like you know one-on-one -on -one, we have to go in like it has evolved into where it's like okay beat each other up and then come back to the crib that yeah. um i wouldn't have wanted to see him in that one uh but yeah so landon number one i'd probably say kenny two west three okay cool and out of all the freshman two rookies who 
male and female, who did you vibe with the most? Um, at that time, me and even though Cara was there only for a super short time, me and her clicked like immediately. I don't know why, because she's like not we're not the same at all. Like, yeah. At all. But like we had to stay in that tent forever. Uh, before we even got to the house. We were in that tent for like almost a week. Me and Cara, we clicked um, super quick. Uh, like, just like um, whenever we got to Cutthroat, um, as soon as we got to the airport before we were going and she saw me, she literally ran and jumped on me and grabbed me, wrapped her legs around me. I'm like, ah, oh, she said, be my be my be. I'm like, all right, that's my home girl right there. Until Abe swooped in, but that's all another story. <laughs> <laughs> But um, because then they were more like the yeah, like, yeah, yeah. just friends. Like it was never like a oh, I'm trying to hook up kind of thing with her. Yeah. But, um, but now me and Car, and then uh, me and Nor, me and Nor, actually me and Nor were uh, roommates out here in Vegas when I first oh, moved okay. out here. I convinced him to move out here. Um, yeah, and he's doing great, man. He's yeah, how are you doing? Uh, he, um, cool. Yeah, he he won. I forget this uh this show that I think it was on ABC or NBC. I forget, but it's like some golf show. Uh, he won it. He won like a quarter mil, <laughs> like, oh. like uh, last year, um, oh. before everything went crazy or whatever. Yeah. Um, but he's doing great, man. But yeah, I, I convinced him to move out here. Me and him lived together for about a year, and uh, but yeah, I'd say on that show, me and Car first, and then me and Nor, as far as the guys go. Me and Pete were real cool for a minute, and then we just lost touch. Um, but yeah, and me and Sandy were real cool for a minute. And then, you know, we, she still hit me up every now and then through social media, just saying, hey, uh, your baby's so cute. You know, little stuff like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, and then Vinny lives out here in Vegas. So we were cool for a second when I first moved out here. Um, Luke was my boy. Oh, he still is my boy. We just don't talk that much anymore. Uh, you taking okay. me back down memory road. I ain't thought about this <laughs> people in a minute. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Carly, Carly actually, right after the season, because, you know, her and Landon won, she flew me out of here. Oh. She was like, she was like, man, you're so dope, blah, blah, Because she, I yeah, like, well, that, she, <laughs> yeah, but she, no, but she, no, she was getting money anyway, because she was a cop, oh, okay. which is at Sapphire, and she lived All out right. here in, um, in Vegas anyway, so she was like, you got to get your love out of Arkansas, man, come back, <laughs> and I'll show you how to party for real, and I was like, all right, cool, so yeah. I came out, and that was just love, man, so I haven't talked to her in years. And then Sydney, we were cool for a second, but we never were really that tight. And uh, that was, am I missing somebody? No, what's that uh, tall? Jeff. I think his name was Jeff. Yeah, was yeah, Jeff. yeah. Yeah, I, we ain't, no, I, nah, yeah. I don't even know. Uh, what, what's, yeah, that's just, I mean, there's nothing, there's, there's no disrespect, but I mean, we never clicked. Yeah. And then afterwards, it was kind of like, I never knew what happened with him. So I think I hit everybody. No, what about uh, what about Teresa and Laura? Oh, shit. yeah, the biggest bosses <laughs> on the whole thing. Uh, no, see, me, me and Laurel did click, and we are cool. Um, Laurel, so like when we were in that tent, they would bring us out intermittently, and we would uh, they to feed us. But literally, yeah. we were in that tent with cots, and we were in the middle of the field. The, the edit makes it seem like we we're only there for a couple nights. We were there for like a week, and it was just. Uh. Yeah, I think we're about to do something. They'd be like, "No, nah, you're just coming out to eat, and then y'all can just chill for the rest of the day and at the end of the night, go to sleep, and then we'll figure it out in the morning." I'm like, "What yeah. it turned out would be though." I think it was like some of the other cast members, um, the people that had already been on, like your Jens and your Paulas and all them. I think their flights are getting messed up, so they're just keeping us on ice until they everybody got uh, in. But it okay. sucked. Like we didn't have no alcohol, no no weed, no nothing. <laughs> but it was just like, you know, we just uh, was just sitting there and eating and hanging out. Now, Laurel, me and her got super cool because um, I pray I pray before I eat. You got to bless your food, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, because like everybody was sitting down and just scarfing down. So if I got my plate, I sat down, I did my little, you know, and she was sitting right across from me. She looked up, she was like, I like you. And then we got super cool. Like she's not like super, you know, religious. Neither am I spiritual, I'll say. Uh, yeah, because you know nothing happens by chance. I don't think you know, but yeah, um, she was just like, "Yo, I, I dig that." And so me and her got super tight. And then uh, Teresa, that's the homie, man. Um, once I figured out she could hoop, we would always talk talk that talk. Ah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but no, Teresa's super dope, man. And then you know, shout out to her. She got a baby on the way. I don't know if she already had a baby, 
we haven't talked in a while neither, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, Laurel and Teresa is super dope. I'd say the people that I would, if they get, if they came into town, I'd make it a point to see them. It would probably be um, everybody but Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow. I don't know him, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's real, though. That's real, though. Like, you're not going to match with everybody. You know, everybody's vibe is in your cup of tea. And that's fine. Like, no beef. But, you know, we just don't click. We just don't click yeah. with that. You know? So I understand that, man. So moving on to your second season, you I considered you a dark horse of Cutthroat. Uh, you had a season under your belt. And although the red team won that season, how do you think they kept putting you in? Uh, well, the excuse I kept getting was that they just didn't know me. Um, I was a new guy. Uh, they had to see what I could do. And I'm like, okay, by the third challenge, if you can't see what I can do, what, what I mean, what else do I got to show you? So, yeah, that was the um, that was the excuse. I mean, that was the excuse. The same excuse they gave me, Mandy, and Camilla – uh, every time because, you know, uh, Brad, Chet, um, Melinda, who I love. Melinda's one of my, my good friends. We still talk. Um, and she kind of just got sucked into it because that was her first time meeting me as well. But she had watched the previous season because me and Danny got into it or whatever, and that's her ex. Yeah, and she was like, yeah, what the f happened with that? You know, because the edit just shows what it is. I was like, well, it built up like this and, you know, whatever. I should have hit him. But I was just so thankful to be there. I didn't want to mess up my opportunity. And I knew in the contract, you hit somebody, you're going home and you're not getting paid. And there's a big chance that they might not bring you back. So I was like, man, I'm just, you know, but looking on it and how they have had some controversial people come back, I should have rocked it because I had them lined up because, you know, we got into a little thing. And that's why she was actually talking to me um, on Cutthroat. She was like, I watched the, um, the season. And she was like, what happened? Like, how did it lead up to that? Because, you know, the edit will, you know, there's little stuff that they just can't put in or just, you know, for time or whatever. So I told her about all of that or whatever. And I was thinking about it too, because at the time, I, I've watched that footage a million times. And I'm just like, I had, because he pushes me and his arms drop and I'm right there and I just stopped. I, I could have rocked his whole head off his body. Like it, but, because at that point, I was probably like 15 pounds heavier than I am now. Like I was in the gym, like for real, for real. I need to get back in there, but you know, it's kind of hard to do when you got a job and kids and all that. <laughs> but, um, but I was, I was so concerned because I was, I was so thankful for the opportunity to even be on the show. And I didn't, I didn't want to jeopardize that by, oh, he's a hothead or he's a fighter. This is that. And even in the contract, you know, it'll say, you know, if you assault somebody, uh, you, you're getting sent home, you're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. And then for the most, you never know if you're ever going to be able to come back. You know, looking back on it, though, there's been several people who have done crazy stuff that they've brought back. Uh, so in hindsight, I definitely would have knocked this out. But we've talked since then. Ain't no, ain't no beef, nothing like that. Like I said, it's okay. a decade old. But um, but yeah, back to the point. You know, um, Melinda was kind of caught up in it because you know she was like, "Oh, you're super cool. You know, I like you and stuff." But she knew. Um, Chet and Tori and Brad and um, who's the other guy we had? Uh, Dunbar. Uh, Dunbar. And who else? Um, Camilla, Paula. There's Paula. Uh, she didn't know. Nobody knew Camilla. Nobody knew Camilla. We were like, who are you? And then <laughs> yeah. Yeah. who's the other guy? Um, um, did you say Tyler? Tyler. Yeah, I love Tyler. Tyler's cool people, man. Uh, he was just playing the game too. Though Tyler was like, "Hey, I gotta go with them because they all knew each other." So the, me, Mandy, and Camilla, we just didn't have a chance. Yeah. Anytime the, the red team lost, yeah. yeah. Anytime the red team lost, it had to be us. But then after I'd gone in, you know, so many times, I remember. I forget. I forget which one it was, but uh, Dunbar was saying that you know he was going to. Uh, I think it was before one of the challenges. He was going to go if we lost because I'd been in every time. And then at the back end of it, because, you no, know, we had a blind vote, um, I had to go in again. I think that was the – that might have been the one that Derek sent me home. I, I, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I was pissed, man. But at, the, at that time, I was so tired. Like, I was kind of – I was like, you know, <laughs> I was like, man, like, all right. But, like, yeah, deuces. 
Yeah. And the red, yeah, the red team was, yeah, the red team was actually my favorite team that season. I was Cutthroat was actually my first season ever watching the challenge in oh. real time. Hey. So I knew nobody, just like how you saying nobody knew Camilla. I knew yeah. nobody yeah. on the show. So watching you guys, I was like, okay, cool. I mean, looking back at it now, I probably would have been team blue or gray. But the yeah. red team, for me, the red team were the underdogs. I always root for the underdogs in some yeah. way, shape or form. So yeah. so yeah. I really wanted the rare teams to win. And you going into those two eliminations and you went against Ty and you beat Ty. I was like, come on, man. Like, Brandon got to make the final. And then, you know, Derek sent you home. And yeah. And, and Derek, but, yeah, Derek is a beast. I don't know if you've seen any older, older challenges or whatever, but yeah, we're about the same size. But he is a, he, he's that little motherfucker. He's a beast, man. Like, he's a pit bull. Yeah. He's a oh, pit yeah. Moving into my, Favorite season of all, absolute favorite season. Anybody who knows me knows that I love me some rivals. So, right, obviously, my absolute favorite season. Um, I was Thailand. I was Thailand. Were you excited to be competing against a stock male cast? I think it's one of the probably, if not the most stock male cast in my opinion, um, okay. ever in the season. So. And so with that being said, were you a bit apprehensive or were you excited to be competing against such fast rivals? I mean, in all honesty, um, I, I, was, I was fairly confident um, going into rivals. Now, I will say I didn't train how I was supposed to. Had I done that, I would have been able to beat uh, Wes and Kenny like I almost did. But... Um, no, coming off coming off my performance in uh on Cutthroat, I was like, all right, they know me now. So and I'm getting I'm going into my third season in a row. Cause you know, sometimes yeah. they won't they won't get you another one and you they'll skip you on one and then bring you back and little things like that. So okay, this is my third one in a row. Um I didn't um didn't train properly. Uh but at the same time I still felt like I, I had a good shot. And then even when I got there and saw who was there, I wasn't worried. I'd already seen Kenny and Wes and what they could and couldn't do. Um, my biggest okay. thing was I was just worried about what the eliminations were going to be. And because they yeah. never let us know what the actual challenge uh, theme is going to be until we get there. We don't know if it's going to be teams of two, big teams, yeah. individual. And now they've been mixing it up every other episode where it's like, now you're on a team, now you're not, now, you know, well, stuff like that. So that was my biggest concern, but I wasn't, I wasn't nervous at all. I was like, I was cool. I was like, now I'm one of them. I'm, I'm in there. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. People, yeah, I'm, I'm in there. I'm in the crew. So, <laughs> nah, I wasn't, I wasn't worried about, about nobody. And then having, and then once I figured out what it was, once they told us, and having Ty as a partner, even though we weren't like friends or anything, there wasn't nothing that was ever that, that crazy anyway to make us. Uh, you know, hate each other, but I said, look, yeah. we need to lock this in, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. look, looking at him, he's a specimen, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a dog, so that's how <laughs> I sent him, you know what I'm saying, there's a difference, you know, it's, it's it's mainly up here, but, yeah, you know, he's a specimen, looking at him, he's, you know, he's chiseled out of granite, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I ain't no slouch, I'm decent over here, you know, I got yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. pack, <laughs> but, <laughs> But I'm like, you know, you look at him and you look at me. He's taller, he's cut up, and I'm yeah. over here like, all right, you know. All right. I, got you know, I, I, did what, I did what I did, but I still I felt like, okay, we're together. I sent you home. I know you've been working yourself since uh, the last time. So if we got to get into something, then, you know, I feel like I felt pretty confident that we could get far. Um and then, uh, it was like, even on that first challenge, I think we uh, had to jump off the slope. thing. It was something stupid, but I wasn't really worried about that one. And we didn't have to, you know, yeah. face elimination or nothing about that. And then uh, people were looking at us like we were a threat. Like, Paula would tell me all the time, she's like, yeah, you better watch out for Brandon and Ty. She would, like, she would tell people that, you know. And then, then he got into his little fight, like, the first night or the second night or whatever. I forget about, uh, I forget uh, who it was or whatever. But With, with Autumn. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the first season I met Leroy. Me and Leroy are like brothers right now. I talk to him at least once a week. You know, he just moved. Shout out to Leroy. He just moved to Houston with Cam. Yeah. They, they are so, she's so great for him. That's a whole yeah. other interview. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, Love so. Nah, because I got some stories. Because me and him lived together here in Vegas, too, for a while. And yeah. we didn't, I didn't have no girl. He didn't have no girl. I ain't have no kids. Trust me, we gotta talk about it. Oh, man, trust me. So, so I think not. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking that you know I got a pretty decent uh, shot at getting far, and then we get put into elimination, which I was, you know, I was just like, it's gonna happen at some point. You know, I'm I'm used to it at this point. And then I see what it is. I'm like, I've never did a rope climb in my life, and I'm like. And we're going against Kenny and West, arguably two of the best that's ever done it. Once I see what the uh, the elimination is, and I'm like, I have never done this. Like, you know, like our gym class didn't have rope climbs. So I was like, all right, you know, whatever. So I'm just going to do what I can. So the first heat, I'm just like, I'm just trying what I can. I burn out on the first heat, though. I get up there, I ring the thing. I'm not knowing that I can just drop. That probably would have saved me a little bit of energy. But I'm hanging up there looking over to the side. And it's just, Kenny ain't even by me, you know, because we did have the option if you're by each other to kick each other, push each other off. They told us that before we started, like you can and pull each other down or whatever. But that would have made it a lot harder and a lot longer. And then um, so everybody's just worried about getting up by themselves. So I look over, I didn't kill Kenny. I'm like, oh, if Ty would have won that first heat, it would have been a wrap. It would have been done. We win. It's a wrap. But because I beat Kenny and then Wes beats Ty, Ty's over there just like, I'm like, dude, you got all these damn muscles. You can't like, oh my God. So by the time I drop back into the water and get out, I'm exhausted. Um, so, and now I'm soaking wet, <laughs> which is even worse. So I get out and I'm just like, okay. And so TJ's like, well, Wes won, Brandon run, won. We have to have a final heat because the team, the team didn't win. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this, man. I'm gassed out. So I'm trying to buy time. I should have actually, I should have just waited. Even when he blew the horn, I should have just waited. So I'm standing there, standing there. And they blow the horn, jump back on them. I get like a little bit up and I'm wet. And I'm just like, I can just feel the cramps coming. And I'm just like, ah. And Wes is even struggling too. But he's just like getting it, getting it, getting it. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to catch him. So uh yeah I, I threw in the towel on that one um but I should have I feel like I should have I should have gotten something for beating everybody the first time and then even on top of that Ty should have done his part and he didn't but uh yeah Rivals is fun man met a lot of good people there uh that was our first time meeting Jasmine me and her still talk every now and then she's sweet um first time meeting Evan he was super cool uh I haven't talked to him since but he's super cool uh, yeah, and, you know, me and Anissa got tight. I haven't talked to her in a while. Uh, but yeah, man, it's uh, it was cool. Rivals was cool. That's cool, man. I know you kind of answered the question, but just so I have it on, on tape, I'll just repeat it and then I'll go to the next question. Uh, going on this one of my favorite eliminations that season, you literally beasted up the rope and outperformed everyone in the first round. Explain what happened when you and Wes were going head to head in the last round. Yeah, going going up against, yeah, I got you. Yeah, going up against Wes head to head on that last round was uh, something I didn't want to do because I exhausted myself in the first one. Because, like I said, I never have had to do a rope climb before. Like, never. Like, my school didn't have that in gym class. So, yeah. Uh, so, I just was like, let me just scramble for my life to get up. I killed everybody on the first one, but I also killed myself because <laughs> I had nothing. <laughs> like, it's a. It's a full body workout, man. Like it yeah, is crazy. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I know your full arms were burning. Oh man, because I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about really using my feet so much. Like I was just, which I should have yeah. done. I thought it, like after the fact, people were like, "No, you should have," blah blah blah. But just mainly just upper body, and I was kind of trying to grab on my legs. And in the second round, um, yeah, and they really didn't explain the rules that much. I mean, it would have mm -hmm. been, uh, it, yeah. I mean, they wanted both people to get it, and then they were like, okay, if one person gets it, then you have to... I mean, it would have been great if it was like, okay, first one up wins for the team, then, yeah, I'd have been yeah, the coolest yeah. dude in the world. I'd be Kenny and West by myself, which I technically did anyway. Um, 
or well, Kenny West and Ty for the second time. Leave that in. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah, that that second round, man, I was not prepared for that. It was it was tough. Oh. Man. I mean, you know, you know, shout out to West, man. He did his thing. He was in definitely better shape than me and most of the people there. Um, but yeah, it uh, it's it sucked, man, because yeah. I was. I, it would have been super cool to, for for me to take down both of them by myself. That would have been that would have been dope. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, man. And I know you kind of talked about Ty a little bit, but are you still in communication with him, or would you consider uh, each other rivals to this day? No, I haven't. I haven't talked to Ty in years. Uh, actually, when we left uh, on our connecting flight, we sat down, we had some dinner, had a couple of drinks or whatever. We were waiting. We had a little layover when we were flying back from Costa Rica, and uh, he was like. He's like, yeah, man, he's super cool, man. Like, um, because he's so reactive and things like he just does stuff just to get a rise out of people. Yeah. But he he did say to me, he was like, he was like, man, uh, I do want to take some things from you because you know, a lot of people like you because you just you're a people person, like you read people well and you make them feel good, and that's why they like you. Like, I need to think about stuff like that before I just pop off and uh stuff like that. And I was like, I and even from him, I was like, Well, there are times where I get taken advantage of because of that. And I do need to be a little bit more assertive about certain things. Yeah. So we did kind of bounce off each other a little bit. But no, it was all love when we left, man. Uh, although I did get on to him, I was like, dude, like, you you doing all this shit to look good. It ain't translating to yeah. getting us no money. Money, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I never climbed a rope in my life. Yeah. And the first time I did it, I killed it. And I said, like, all oh. I needed, if you would have done it, oh, man, it would have been. Because really... It, had we switched, maybe he might. Well, Kenny couldn't even get out the water. Kenny couldn't even do it. Like he was struggling. <laughs> I would have beat West because I already beat everybody. Yeah. So I would have beat yeah. West, and then he most likely had we. He could have beat Kenny, and then we would have been straight. But great, yep. But yeah, it is so, what it is, man. And that, I thought elimination could have changed the whole dynamic of the house. Oh, like, we would have had. I, you wouldn't have been able to tell me a damn thing when I got back to that house. <laughs> I've like, been like, I, I just put Kenny and Wes home. Y'all can no. Everybody got to come talk to me now before you want to make yeah. a decision. And I think by sending Kenny and Wes home, this is my take on that. I don't even think Johnny and Tyler would have won no. the whole season because I felt as if you guys would have came together and be like, okay, let's go after the mob and yeah. pick off Johnny and Tyler, and then. Evan and Nehemiah, and goodbye. Let's get some new chops. Oh, yeah. So it, it really would have shifted the game. I really wish. Uh, that's one elimination that I really wish. Yeah. I still think about it, man. Like, to be told, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I still think about that from time to time. Like, <laughs> mm. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. Yeah, that was something. But a funny moment that happened <laughs> uh, was with the whole verbal altercation between Wes and CT. And do you know how long it actually went on for? And I also noticed that when they took it upstairs, you had your sleeping mask on, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. And yeah, because like, were, were you were you aware of what was happening? And if so, did did we see everything that happened? Um, not from the beginning. I wasn't I wasn't privy to it, man. Um, they had been bickering throughout the day, like little stuff. And then, of course, you know, once you get to drinking and it kind of gets escalated. But everybody else in the house, we had already partied or whatever and hung out and drank and talked our, you know, talked our talk. And then we, um, we, uh, everybody was like, okay, we're going to bed, man. We're tired. Because I think the next day we didn't have anything to do, I don't think. I'm not sure. It might have been a challenge or it might have been an off day. I'm not sure. But anyway, Everybody was like, man, we tired. We already were drunk. We were going to go to sleep. It was a good deal. And then you can just hear this. Oh, I'm like, what is going on? And then uh, Nehemiah, I think he was like, oh, that's, that's CT. And I'm like, whatever. Because that was my first time uh, dealing with CT, too. So I was like, I'm not, not whatever. So um, I'm just laying there. And then. Uh, Wes comes up into the room, stomping around, grabbing stuff. 
Uh, then I hear CT come up there, then they go back down the stairs and they come back up. And I think what West threw his mattress out the, the room or something. And um, it was just, a, it was just like, yo, y'all, like, y'all done? But they didn't, I, I, they didn't put that in there. But I sat up and I was like, are y'all, because they, where I'm from, like, are y'all going to do something? I mean, y'all talking, are y'all going to do something or y'all done? And I'm just looking at them like, whatever, I mean, you know. So, I mean, it was watching it after the fact, because I'd forgotten about it, actually. Uh, watching it when it came on, it was funny. Uh, I probably <laughs> should have inserted myself in there, at least just for some comic relief. <laughs> Give me some FaceTime on that on that screen, but um, nah, it was funny. But they they weren't gonna do that. They didn't want to jeopardize their money. But I mean, both of them know they've been in the game long enough to where, yeah, it it was a real thing. But they know if they keep going, that they're gonna they're gonna be a bigger part of that episode. But I mean, it was yeah. it was a real thing though. It wasn't like they just made it up just to do it. But yeah. I mean, I know. Like Wes, CT, Johnny, people like that, they know how to amp it up to, you know. Yeah. But can you confirm, like, the amount of time that it went on? Oh, it went on all night. The sun was coming up before they got done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So literally when we saw 10 p.m., 12 a.m., 1.39 a.m., that was legit. That was legit. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of, that's one of the things that actually was legit on that because they know there's just so many people on the show that they know that if somebody asks us, like we're, we're going to tell them the truth, you know what I'm saying? So editing can make things see, seem a certain way, but that went on. I don't even know when it started, but I know it wasn't done uh, before the sun started coming up. So it wow. went on for hours and hours. Because I know like when, because after CP closed the door, Wes was like, you're going to let the air conditioning out. And he was like, no, come close the door, come close the door. And he yeah. was like, nah. And then, boom, scene goes straight to them in the kitchen. Everybody's eating breakfast. And, yeah. boom, they popping off again. So, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, that rivalry was, it, it seems very, it was, it didn't seem made up. It no, yeah, no, they, they were, they were mad at each other. They were genuinely like, had the cameras not been there, CT would have rocked Wes's world. It would have been a <laughs> wrap. Yeah. Yeah. But, and Wes was in such better shape back then. Uh, yeah, I but I mean, he's half the size so of CT. He was, well, true. How tall, how tall is CT and, and Wes? Uh, CT, I'd probably put him in like a good six two, six three. He's probably okay. he's probably a good two hundred, maybe. Well, now he has a dad bod or whatever. But like when he's in shape, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'd put him around. You know, good two something. Uh, he's he's a big. There's only a few people because like everybody, like people when they meet me in person, they're like, oh, I thought thought you were a lot bigger because I'm I'm like five eight. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but. But everybody on the show oh. is like around the same size. I mean, Wes might be like five nine, five ten. I mean, he's kind of. But everybody on TV looks bigger than they really are. But the only people yeah. that are on the show that I've uh, that I've met actually in person that are just like you know, big dudes would be Zach, CT, Leroy's a big dude. Um, I mean, that's about it that just right. comes hey, to mind. Wow. I mean, John, Johnny, Johnny's a he's in shape. He's a big guy, but he's not like he's not a tall guy. Um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Tyree, he, he doesn't really come up. He's not big. He's lean, but he's tall. Yeah. But he's like, he's cut up, but he's not like an intimidating big guy. But yeah, yeah. CT, uh, Kenny's big. So CT, yeah. Kenny, Zach, and Leroy are like the ones that stick out to me. I might be missing a couple people, but yeah, those are the ones that stick out. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And what about Brad and Landon? That's shorter than you. No, the, the lane is about five ten. Uh, Brad, uh, Brad's about the same, about five nine, five ten, about average size as far as height goes. I mean, they're both yeah. in, in great shape, you know. Uh, but yeah, as far as like just when somebody walks in the room, you're like, damn, get your big ass out of here. That's a Zach, yeah, 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 if there were a rival season to be filmed sometime in the future, maybe a rivals four, and you were on, who do you think your partner would be? Uh, 
and he hit a well, beast. You don't un- know about it. There's an unknown beef. There's an unknown beef between. Well, there's no beef anymore. We we squashed it. But me and Alton on Battle of the Seasons, we really did not like each other. Um, um, So maybe him, or maybe even. um, They might put. They might. uh, Maybe me and Big Easy. Actually, me and Big Easy are cool. But I mean, I, I, I had some choice words about him because, you know, he me on battle of the seasons and like that whole time it was just the he's just bringing the whole team down and then he convinced yeah. Alton to vote me and Carmaria in when he should have he should have been going I've been in every time I was like yeah well you cost us the game every time and yeah we had the poorest performance so you need to go in uh but yeah so I don't know I mean I'm in a different space so there's nobody and I haven't watched the show in a minute I mean I'm watching all stars now but yeah. I haven't watched the uh, the main cut of uh, the challenge uh, in years. I mean, because I'm I'm pretty biased yeah. towards myself. If I'm not on it, I'm not watching it. Hey, okay. <laughs> Give me one second, okay? Okay, go watch your show. I'll be right there. Okay. No shame in that one. Like... Yeah, hold on. You want me to kiss it? Yeah. Yeah. Let me okay. see. Come here. Come here. Is it better? Yeah. Okay. Go watch your show. I'll be right there. This girl. No, <laughs> no man, like seeing people in action. Yeah, no, nah, she's uh, she she she's a big ham. If I'm not right next to her, she she knows that I'm talking to somebody else. She she wants to know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but now that you started talking about bottle of the season, that's actually the next the next part. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you guys know you were going to be coming on later than all the other? No, I actually was. I was with Leroy when I got the call because like they called me a couple months prior to just be an alternate. So usually, you know, you get a call to be an alternate and sound like ah, you probably ain't gonna get the call. So it's like whatever. So I started working out a little bit, but I really wasn't like thinking I was gonna get get on. Mm-hmm. And then um, my uh, what was it? Uh, and then Leroy was kind of pissed because he didn't get a call at all for um, Battle of the Season. So. Um, we were at a barbecue, half drunk. I'm eating, feeling good, and then my phone starts ringing. Anytime you see that 818 pop up on your phone, you know, yeah. And I'm like, hello, and it's one of the producers, and she's like, hey, so we know you're an alternate. Um, how you feeling? And I was like, I'm cool, I'm at this little party right now, actually, with Leroy. And she was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Um, we need you on a plane tomorrow night. And I'm like, uh, okay. Man, she was like, yeah, so yeah, you're going to be on the next show. And I was like, okay, yes, dear. Now, see, thank you. Okay, I'll be right there, okay, bro? I know you're messing with me. Okay, go watch your show. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, so I was like, all right. So I was like, Lee, uh, I just got confirmed. He was like, you lying. <laughs> I was like, no, I got. I'm leaving tomorrow. He was like, yeah. "Put that drink down, let's go." So he drove me back yeah. to the. Actually, we stopped at Walmart to get some stuff, and then went back to the crib. Uh, he helped me throw some stuff in the bag, and then um, yeah, that next evening I was at the airport, hungover, and flying to my. Con- I forget what my connecting flight was. I think it might have been New York. No, I think that was Miami. I don't know, but we ended up going to. Uh, wait, what season is this? Uh, this is Battle of the Seasons. Uh, we were in season. Turkey. Yeah, that was yeah. Turkey. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> it was randomly just jump on a plane, let's go. So, so who would you keep the same teammates or would you swap? And how was your dynamic? Oh, wait, say that again. Uh, would you keep the same teammates or would you swap them? And how was the dynamic of the team? Um, well, when we got to the airport, because everybody got that same call that I did. So um, yeah. I walk in, I see cars. She's like, ah, oh, D. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> and yeah, then, you already know something. Yeah, then we see Camilla. I'm like, all right, because Camilla's a beast. I mean, a lot of people don't like her. I mean, I have my, I haven't talked to her in a long time either. I don't have anything against her. I just know how she was and I know she's a mother now and I know things have evolved and she, you know, 
Camilla Nader got 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 raked over the coals for you know things she's done and said. You know, I just hope that she's learned from them. But you know, me and her personally, we had a little thing for a second uh, that was a little little left. But um, as a person, I mean, we've always been pretty decent, man. No no love lost on that one. But as far as the competition goes, she's a beast. So I see her, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. But we still don't even know what the concept of the game is. We just know that we're at the airport yeah. and we got a last minute call. And so then, yeah. then we see Big Easy and Camilla was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, because Camilla at the time anyway, I don't know if she's still like this. I'm pretty sure she is. This, this is one of the things that I do like about it yeah. is that her emotions are right here. Like she, if it's something she doesn't like, she doesn't like it. If it's something she does, she's all over it. But it's just kind of yeah. like, you know, she's she'll tell you if you suck, and she'll yeah. So um, she's just like, man, I can just see it on her. She just put her head down. like, so you don't even know what we got going on. So when I see what's going on, I'm like, all right, cool. So then, actually, when we got there, because they held up production because they had to make sure we could all get out there. Um, yeah. We get there. And they put us in a sort of like villa resort kind of hotel situation for like three or four days. We st- we don't know what's going on, so like we're going out at night. Uh, we went down to the to the Mediterranean, to the ocean, like we or the sea. I'm sorry. Uh, so we we're sitting there, and we're drinking. Well, not as much, but you know we're still having a good time. We're eating good, getting up every morning, doing little workouts, stuff like that. And um, yeah, you can go ahead and go. Um, and then uh, we do, we shoot our opening credits or whatever. The producers come with some cameras. Like, okay, we're gonna come back and pick you up tomorrow and take you over to to the set. And we get there. Uh, no, they come and get it, bring us our jerseys and stuff. And we're thinking we're finna go. Naturally, actually, they didn't. We're thinking we're finna go to the house because my okay. Here's another little thing that some people might not know. Okay. Oh so my dumbass. So. They come and pick us up, and I'm thinking we finna go to the house. And they going, you know, we're gonna walk in. Folks are like, oh, sh-, you know, whatever, whatever. We gonna see who who the rest of the cast or whatever, because they still haven't told us what the um what the scenario is, the theme of the whole show is, or nothing. We they uh so the whoever the PA or whoever's driving us to where we're supposed to go, she kept making these stops because she's on the radio. I think she's she's yeah. trying to buy time because they got to set up for our intro to walk in. And so she stops at this uh, convenience store in the middle of Turkey. We sit there for like 10 minutes. I'm like, man, if we finna uh, just go to the house and kick it, let me jump in this little convenience store real quick and see if they got any alcohol in here. So I jump out the car because the producer or the PA, she's like out on the phone or whatever. I was like, I'm going to run in there real quick. I'll be right back. I yeah. went in there. They had alcohol in there. So I had my card on me. Boom, I buy a bottle of vodka and I pour it into this big liter um, water bottle and I, then I put it in my backpack. So I'm yeah. sitting in the back seat. I'm sitting in the back seat. I'm sitting, I'm sipping a little bit. I got a little buzz going, sipping, sipping. So then she comes back, or the PA, she's like, okay, guys, we're getting ready to go. Uh, just be ready. And then she goes to the trunk and she comes out and says, you guys need to change. And gives us our uniforms. And I'm like, for what? And she's like, no, the first challenge is today. We went straight to the challenge. <laughs> like that challenge, that, that water challenge, you had to swim out and climb up the yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went straight to it. Like no prep, no nothing. Yeah. So we that that, wow. that shot that you see us jumping out the uh, the Range Rover, like that's what we literally had just <laughs> pulled up. And that was the first time that everybody saw who was coming in. And my have drunk. Wow. <laughs> like, I'm buzzed. Like, I've been sipping vodka the whole time we was waiting. Wow. And then you just throw it straight into a challenge. So I'm like, oh my God. And I see water. I'm like, I hope we don't have to swim because I'm a yeah. drink. But luckily, um, I was straight, like, because uh, it took so long to do like the intro and for TJ to explain why we were there and all that good stuff. And then uh, they're like, okay, this is the challenge. We didn't have to go first, I don't think. I don't remember. But yeah, and then of course, easy to the bed on that one. So, so. <laughs> so would you swap any of them out, or would you keep them? No. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I mean, I I love Easy Man. He's super dope, man. He's a good guy. He's a good heart. 
But I got Car Maria and Camilla, arguably two of the best girls that have ever been on the challenge. Easy gotta go. And I, and I would yeah. I would take I ain't gonna say I would take anybody. Um, because you know, it depends on what the challenge is. You know, if we need some 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 strong, some strength, some heavyweight, you know, a bit of stamina, easy's right there. But you know, for the yeah. most part, these challenges aren't built like that. You know, yeah. Of course, you know, I'll take a Wes, I'll take a Leroy, I'll take a, a bananas, you know. Uh yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, if you to answer the question truthfully, you know, unfortunately, easy gotta go. <laughs> so in your opinion in your opinion, which team do you think was the best team that season? Um objectively. You know, to be totally honest, I don't even remember a lot about that season. Um, do you want me? Do you want me to name some some teams? Yeah, who the, uh, I know okay. we had the San Diego. Okay, we team. had San Diego, Brooklyn, Las Vegas, Fresh Meat Two, Cancun, uh, St. Thomas. Um, I'm missing anybody else. Um, what's the one with? Uh, oh God, was Night those on it? Um. I said Cancun. That was yeah. crazy work. Um, was Jamie on that season? Jamie. Oh, what I, don't you I don't know. Because, no. What, um, that would be New York, New Orleans, man. Yeah, because Knight was there. Because that's what me and Knight yeah. got cool. Yeah. yeah. New Orleans. Me and Knight got yeah. cool that season. I, I would say the best team. I mean, honestly, it was our team minus easy. Um, just to be honest, I mean, but I mean, the was it, San Diego was Zach and them, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Zach and them, um, pretty strong. Zach and Frank, I mean, I mean, they're, they're strong. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, if I want to be honest, not even being biased because of you know my team, but I mean, it all yeah. comes down to the girls when you have teams. Like it really does. Yeah. Um, okay. And I feel like with that being said, we had the strongest team because we had the strongest girls, but we just uh the the, the challenges didn't play to our strengths as far as the guys. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. What do you thought about Vegas? Team Vegas. Man, f them. No. Nah. <laughs> I don't I didn't I don't like Alton, man. I just I I didn't I didn't I didn't know I I'm not gonna say I don't like him. I didn't like him then. Okay. But now I guess he's on all stars now. Do you see a different Side of that, yeah, and I just don't care. That was like eight years ago. Yeah, eight, eight years, years ago. ago. Okay, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, and we we yeah, still also have like, left. Yeah, okay, that's cool though. But yeah. yeah, that season it was like a felt that way. It wasn't the same Alton that you know we knew and loved and the fast competitor. It wasn't. He wasn't that. Yeah, no. that was a different. He was, he was an asshole. <laughs> Well, this is it. And, and obviously, the last season that you appeared on, which was also your first individual season, uh, what were your sentiments for fresh, fresh, sorry, fresh free agents? <laughs> yeah, now free agents, man, it was cool. Like, I think out of all the seasons I've done, it was probably like the best. Uh, as far as production quality, the house was ridiculous. Like even all of, all the staff, all production, they were like, "This is probably one of the dopest houses we've ever filmed at." Dopest houses. Um, as far as the season goes, though, I just didn't feel I didn't feel that great. I didn't feel connected to anybody. I um, that was probably the season I liked the least. Um, oh as far as just how I felt about it. Uh, not because it was individual. Like, I would always want, I always wanted that prior. But just going into it, I just didn't feel, I don't know, I just didn't feel good. Like, physically, mentally, I just wasn't, Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't locked into it. But, it, I mean, yeah. I was super excited to be there. Yeah. Every time you get that phone call, you know, it's like, yo, I mean, I have a chance to, you know, change my life every time you, you get that opportunity. But yeah. I, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like the uh, I didn't like the weather. <laughs> I don't want to be bougie <laughs> like that. No, yeah, um, it was just. And then you got you know like even that when I got voted in, like you had some people in there like the other Brandon, which I'm the only Brandon that counts. But actually, the funny thing is, <laughs> before before uh, I got casted, 
I was gonna go by my middle name because I guess I had some friends. Because my middle name is Drake. Okay. I was, gonna, I was because Brandon is such a common name. I was gonna go by my yeah. middle name, but I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm me. I'm original. I'm going. So now I think about it, I probably should have, you know, whatever. But um, <laughs> the other Brandon Swift, um, his dumbass was just uh, a sucker and a follower uh, for the game. I'm not saying he's a sucker and a follower in life. He's actually a really good yeah. guy, super successful. Super dope. Haven't talked to him in I don't know how long, but he good people. But I'm saying, like in that in that season, he was in the room with bananas and CT and Leroy, and they all you know knew each other and had big dogs on campus or whatever. And he wanted the room with them because coming off the real world and going into the challenge, you already feel like you got you got a little something. This is not your first rodeo, but the challenge is a whole different thing than the real yeah. world. But he wanted to be in there with the big dogs. He felt like he was there, but he really wasn't. Okay, yeah. So they got him to, to vote me in, too. And I'm like, after he had been talking to me, because I was basically, uh, I forget, who was it? I think it might have been Jasmine, who he had this super huge thing for. Yeah. And he kept, because me and Jazz were cool, so she would be talking to me about him. And then me and Latoya would be trying to, like, help him out because he kept like doing the dumbest like he was just so cock cocky and arrogant like no i don't do this because i don't do this uh because i'm a man and and she's a woman i don't do this i don't do that i'm like okay you're not gonna have it in like just a little like real real conversations outside of the game but then it comes yeah. down to voting this dummy gonna try to tell me that he thought that he was just voting because that's how everybody was voting anyway he's throwing it away i was like no the votes weren't that close or actually the votes were close it was, yeah. like it was a landslide for me. I was like, why would you throw my name out? I mean, if it's a tie, we have to go back and vote again. I'm like, dude, you you just following them. I said, you're going to be next. And lo and behold, he was next. I'm like, they used you as a vote. I said, they're going to use you as a vote, just so you know. And then they're going to vote you in, and then you're going to be going home. Because whoever you go up against, you're not going to be. And then with me, of course, you know, I and I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. As soon as I got voted in, that next night is when elimination was. And I was like, that's you have to pull the cards or whatever. I'm like, everybody else that has to pull. I was like, I know Zach is going to pull it. I, said, I just hope I get an elimination to where it's not physical. Yeah. And we got a, I'm like, man, this is some bull. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's crazy. One of the producers uh, prior to us doing that was like, you don't have to. I'm like, you think I'm going to die? Like, I know Zach's <laughs> a big guy, but I'm cool. I'm going to at least try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but. Yeah. But yeah, you mentioned uh, because you were sent home and you were obviously upset with Swift for voting you in. Uh, yeah. Were you too close in the house um, or were you upset because he was being a pawn? But I think you kind of answered that. Yeah, I was more upset that he was being a pawn. Like he, he was just being real dumb about the decision that he made. He didn't make a decision for himself. Like he, he let them make it for him because he wanted to be cool and be in the crew not knowing that they was making fun of him the whole time behind his back. And even to his face sometimes, and he would just kind of laugh it off as just like, you know, the rookie hazing type thing or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, dude, like, I can't rock with you like that. Um, and no, I mean, like, we were close in a sense to where, um, you know, we'd be up drinking and stuff, and, you know, he'd be talking to me about uh, the whole Jasmine situation and how, you know, he really liked it. Yeah. He wanted to figure, figure whatever out. Uh, and how, you know, and me and Latoya would be trying to help him out. And like, look, like, you messing up on this, you messing up on that. Yeah. So we were close in that sense. But, I mean, ain't no love lost. Like, if I saw him today, it'd be all love. Just in the game aspect of it, like, he, he was a clown for that one. But, I mean, it ain't nothing. Yeah, it ain't nothing. Well, Marlon was on in January um, on the channel. And shout out to him. And he mentioned that the cast gets paid on a weekly basis. What I didn't ask him was, how much money do you all get paid while filming? And I know you did more shows than him. So was it, is it the same amount every season? No. So just in case I am able to uh, rejoin my family, I can't, I'm not going to give you specific okay. numbers. But um, no, it's not the same every season. Oh, after a certain season, um, it is kind of like a, a stock, uh, uh, a foundation that you can build off of and negotiate depending on how great your character is. But starting off, um, you only get a certain amount a week. I don't know if it's changed, but if your first season on the challenge, 
you only get a certain amount a week and nothing is guaranteed. So in the hundreds? Um, it's in the hundreds. It's really low. It was really low. Okay. Um, so you get and you only get that per week. And then if you make it to the final and you win, then you get that money too. But you just okay. get whatever you get per week. Uh, and then if you get sent home first episode, you just get that amount per week and you get shipped back home, which sucks for those who didn't get the time off from work and had to go find a new job or, you know, they had to basically quit their job and go do the challenge because they want to be on TV. Uh, because if you're only making whatever amount, $100 <laughs> um, <laughs> for that week, granted, of course, you know, flights are paid for, you get all this great Under Armour gear, you get exposure for being on TV, you get great food, great experience, uh, priceless things. But you need some tangible things like money when you get back to the crib. So first yeah. season is not so great. Second season, it's uh, uh, the hundreds of dollars that you get is tripled per week. Okay. And, but it's but nothing's guaranteed. Uh, the third season, if you make it to the third season, you get three weeks guaranteed at that triple amount of hundreds. Um, you get three weeks guaranteed just to sign the contract. And then let's say you get eliminated first season or first episode, you still get three weeks worth of pay. That's your guarantee. Yeah. So fourth season, that weekly pay. No, so uh, let me go back. Third season, you get triple of what you were going to get on your uh, first season and get three weeks uh, guaranteed. And then uh, after that third week, uh, after the third week, every extra week, you still get a week extra pay every time. So yeah, look for let's just say allegedly uh, just for um, a scenario, let's say you get 1500 a week to sign okay. the contract, you're guaranteed 4,500. If wow. you make it to the fourth week, you'll get 1500 more fifth week, 1500 more. So it okay. does pay to stay in the game. Um, okay. fifth, fifth season that weekly will go up. You still get the three weeks guaranteed, but let's say they're going to give you three grand a week. So you get nine guaranteed. Then you get another three uh, if you stay. So your sixth season, this used to be the, the way it was. And if I get on for another one, it would technically be my sixth season. Um, you're considered a vet. And yeah. you're going to get vet pay, which, what are these dogs doing? Anyway, uh, you're going to get, um, they're just running around in my, in my office. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get uh, vet pay, which can be, that's going to bump you up. But you're going to get that. Um, just for signing a contract that's significantly more and then you'll still get it used to be like this you'll still get like if you make it past that third week or that fourth week you'll still get x amount for that those extra weeks and if you win the whole thing you still get that money for being there on top of what you get um yeah wow. i didn't know that now i can understand why people like anisa and nani keep coming back see if he's must be on his 17, 18, whatever, last right up there with him. So their yeah. appearance checks are just crazy. Hold on. Is there an appearance check or is or is this the weekly pay? The appearance check is the weekly pay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if they, if you don't win and you, you've been a part of these seasons for 10 plus, it's, a, it's decent. It's decent. Money. Yeah, you're still you're still getting. And then, like for some of the people, there's been there's some people on there who are big uh, characters. I ain't gonna say no names, but yeah. who have never won uh, a final. But they can negotiate their contract and be like, okay, well, I'm not coming unless I get this amount, you know. Yeah. And they'll be like, okay, well, they, they can negotiate like, okay, we'll just do this amount, or we'll just get somebody else, you know. So you can kind of. If, if you have that leverage, you can say, hey, I need this to, you know, uproot myself out of my real life to come back yeah. to this because you called me. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get it. Oh. Wow. And I think you actually breaking that down. A lot of viewers would appreciate to have, I guess, that information because I always wanted to know that, you know? So, yeah. thanks for that information, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Alle <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. But I'd like to point out that I would, I'm super biased um, to the time period that you were on in the challenge. I consider it the golden age of the challenge. Yeah. Well, the same five seasons that you were a part of, I would consider that probably the best time for the challenge. It was at its peak. They started to 
think about more ways of making it better. And, you know, competition, competition got more fast and more, yeah. and, it, and it gained more traction and popularity amongst the viewers. Um, and they started to become, like I said, more creative and the competition was turned up. So out of all the seasons that you did, which one was your favorite? Oh, Cutthroat. Cutthroat. Um, without question, Cutthroat. I mean, I was in my best shape and I actually got to, you know, prove some people wrong and I got to actually, you know, perform. Now, I would have been a lot more animated uh, inside the house, but I'm more, I was brought up more of, um, you know, actions speak louder than words kind of thing. I hate cliches, but when they fit, they fit. Um, so it was more of, I got to perform and just, you know, do my thing. It's like, all right, well, cool. If you want to, if you want to go, let's go. Uh, I, yeah. don't, I don't want to do all that talking, you know, in the house, but <laughs> I definitely would have uh, talked more in the house looking back on it. But yeah, Cutthroat was fun, man. Like, you know, it was, uh, there were more good times than bad, but yeah, it was, uh, I was at my least nervous and least anxious uh, doing Cutthroat. And we could tell because like you said, you were in the best shape of your life. And like I said, I really wish you could have that final and won with the red team. But if yeah, you I, pretty, I pretty much got them to the final with as much people as they had. Exactly. I, they wrote yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They didn't give so. me nothing on that, too. It's funny. A lot of people would be like, oh, they hook you up on the back end? No. Man, okay. oh, no. <laughs> no. I haven't talked to any of them. Like, no. outside of Paula, I talked to her after that. She came out here uh, after that, not too long. Her and Jen came out and we kicked it. Uh, her, yeah. Jen, and Emily, uh, Emily Fitzpatrick. Um, but um, but no, on the me and Mandy were still pretty cool, but she got eliminated already too. Uh, but yeah, out of the people who won, was it Tyler, Brad, uh, Paula, Tori, uh, Dunbar? Those are the people that those are the last that were left that won, right? I think. Um, yeah, they didn't reach out, they didn't say appreciate it, thank you, nothing, no fucking Christmas card, no check, oh, no nothing. Cookie. Not a cookie, not a <laughs> not a cookie, not not a gold star, not a hey, at a boy, none of that. <laughs> None wow. Of that. Oh, wow, 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 wow. But if you could have been a part of any other season, which one you you would have chosen? Um which one might just speak to you? You want to be on that team. Nothing really um jumps out at me. Um because like I said, I haven't really watched any of them um, outside of the ones that I was on. Yeah. Um, even before that, I watched some. I was more of a real world guy versus the real yeah. world Road Rules Challenge. So I never really, really watched the uh, competition shows. Look, girl, I'm coming, okay? Give me one second. Okay. I'll be right there. Okay. You want to share applesauce? Yeah. Okay, go get it in the refrigerator. Um... But, uh, man, I would love to do Cutthroat again. Um, that is the one that sticks out to me. I would love to do Rivals again. Yeah. And um, I haven't I've, – I've, ca I've caught some clips of well, – what is this? This last one. Uh, Double Agent. Double Agents, yeah. Shout Did you watch? Boy Lee. Um, uh, I didn't watch – I haven't watched an episode of it. But of the clips that I've seen, I think that I would like it because there's a little bit more thought into, um, you know, you got to – Put some stuff. Yeah, no, I gotta open it. Okay, hold on. Here you go. Can you say thank you? <laughs> say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Here you go. Throw this away. Throw your top away. Good. Thank you. Huh? It's okay. I'll clean it up in a minute. Whoo, this girl. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I would say yeah. Double H's I think is interesting. I still don't really know the. Oh, and what was that ep not episode? What was that season? Um, I think it might have been after Free Agents, uh, maybe a season or two after that, where they had that, where if you got eliminated, they put you in a house and you could fight your way back in. I love the axes, too. Man, I was so mad about that. I'm like, oh, so now there's an option to come. I go to elimination all the time. And now there's an option to come back in. Yeah. Season right after. I'm not, okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's fine. That would have been interesting to speak. To, that would have been interesting to see you on. But the question is, who who would have been your ex? 
I mean, at that no, time, I'm, I mean, well, I never had a thing on camera. Uh, there was some some rumblings about me and Melinda on Cutthroat. I mean, yeah, there was uh, some flirting there, but she had somebody, I had somebody back home at the time who's now an ex. Um, there was some some stuff, uh, <laughs> but, you know, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, but there's never been anybody that, you know, I've had a, a thing with that would have would have constituted for an ex that happened on camera. Uh, to where, or anything that happened off camera that would, you know, be big enough for them to be like, oh, well, these two are together, or, and they don't like each other anymore. Or there's like some kind of, because any, anybody that I've dealt with on the show, whether it be male or female, and it hasn't, I mean, outside of, they just kind of put me and Ty together because we had an on air argument uh, to make yeah. us rivals. But with uh, females, it never was anything where it's like, oh, they were together, so we got to, and now they're not, so we, yeah, no. Nah, so, but I mean, wow. if I had to choose somebody to be like, oh, I wish that was my ex so I'd have a chance to win, I'd probably hell, pick Laurel. <laughs> <And we'll> go, <laughs> be like, yeah, yeah, we had a thing. Yeah, whatever. She's my partner. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. And yeah. at that time, it was like a kiss was considered an act. I'm like, come on. <laughs> but see, that's we crazy, just though. Be but see, it's crazy because it, it never even came up. Like, they kept trying to put me and Melinda together on Cutthroat because it was just like, we were just, we clicked. Like, we were really, really tight. But yeah. me and Carr actually kissed the first night. That's why Abe hated me. But we didn't kiss. He thought we kissed. No, we uh, we yeah. hugged. It's like, it like a little peck because I my first time seeing her since um, First Me Too. Yeah. And it was like a little peck, little thing or whatever. And he was like, Brandon. Like, no, that's, I want her. I'm like, dude, don't know. I'm not, I don't want her. You got it. You got, go ahead. Go, yeah, go. Take it. I'll, dr I'll be your chauffeur. Whatever you need, I'll put you right on in there. <laughs> well, I know you said that you and Lee and Tara, that those are like the people that you're super like close to. Um, anybody else that you still keep in touch with out of all the challenges that you did? Um, I still talk to Nora every now and then. Um, okay. uh, Sandy every now and then. Uh, of course, you know, Lee, Cara. Um, let me see. That's about it. Oh, my boy Tyree. I don't want to leave him out. Because I don't yeah. even think about the show when I think about Tyree. Just me and Tyree just talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Darrell, I just talked to him uh, about a week ago. Okay. Um, let me see. Easy text me uh, about a week or two ago. Okay. Um, Katie, who we were really tight years back. Uh, we haven't been that close in a minute, but you know, if, if I reach out to her, I know she'll pick up the phone. Me and Melinda still talk. Um, that oh, I just talked to Jasmine too about a week or two ago. We talked on the phone for about a good hour. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. But uh, that's about it that really just comes to mind right now. Okay. But yeah, 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 everybody's cool in my book, though. There's nobody that I wouldn't talk to if I, you know, we cross paths or yeah. nothing like that. But then, I mean, there's, but there's a difference. It's not like I'm going to reach out and, you know, send you a Christmas card if we don't really put each other like that. And if you're in town, I'm not going to, you know, change my schedule to go hang out with you unless you are somebody that I need to go hang out with. So, but I mean, but ain't, yeah, ain't no love lost on anybody I've ever done anything with. I want us to play a little game and then we'll wrap everything up. So it's called Give or Take. So keeping things current with the new season, I know you said you didn't watch, but with Double Agents, uh, there was, <laughs> there was a role agent aspect where you kind of, you didn't perform in the daily and you waited until the elimination to get your new partner and you had the choice to choose who you want. Um, so with all that being said, I'm going to list two, two people and I want you to pick who you would choose as your partner. Okay. 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 I have six pairs. The first one, Laurel and Cara Maria. Oh man, that's tough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, swing yes. it. That's tough. I gotta go with Car. I gotta. I mean, we just have a little bit more history than me and Laurel. Um, but yeah, I love Laurel to death. But 
me and Carl, we have we have a little more history on and off uh, the show. So I got to go with Car. Okay, cool. I figured you you would have said that. <laughs> okay, Nani and Teresa. You said Nani and Teresa. Yeah. Teresa. I got to go with Teresa. Uh, it's just going to be the history thing as well. Uh, and they're both, to, to me, they're pretty even. Teresa probably say something different. But I think they're pretty close. Um, Natty got that mouth on her, though. Uh, and she's pretty intimidating. But yeah, I got to go with Teresa on that one. Okay. So what about Landon and Darrell? Who would you? Oh, Darrell. 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 No, I love Landon to death, but Nah, I got to go with my boy. Yeah, I got to go with Darrell. There's, I don't even got to explain it. It's Darrell. <laughs> okay, okay. Kenny and Wes. Kenny. Kenny because we, we're just, um, I feel like our personalities are a little bit more in sync than me and Wes. Um, which actually, no, I'll take that back. Because of that, I'm going to pick Wes. Because he's going to play that political game a little bit better, I think. Uh, definitely than me. Um, and then... Yeah, I think Kenny. Kenny's too likable. You got to have a little bit of, a little bit of stank on you. That way, you ain't got everybody all up in your. Shit. So I, yeah, I'm gonna go with Wes on that one. Okay. How about Carly and Siobhan? Carly and Siobhan. Uh, <laughs> why would you? <laughs> That's. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I mean, Carly. Carly got a belt. You know, she 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 got she yeah. got a championship belt. I gotta. I love them both, man. But uh, Carly was uh, on the first uh, with me, and she got me out here to Vegas for my first time too. She's a sweet girl, and I mean, she she finished the job. She has a championship under her belt, so I gotta go with Carly. Okay. Okay. And the last one, Jasmine and Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> man, get the f <laughs> Jasmine. And <laughs> Jasmine, man, come on, okay. man, that that little firecracker, man, and like I said, no love lost for Caitlyn neither. But I've seen them both in action in person, so yeah, you know, no love lost on Caitlyn at all, man. She's good people, and like one of the most courageous people that you can ever find. Because I mean, to make a decision how how she made it on national TV and owns it, you know what I'm saying? Like with no uh, no regard for anybody else's feelings, she lives her own life and does her thing as she sees fit. You can do nothing but respect that and salute that. So definitely, uh, uh, definitely got kudos for uh, kudos and all all kind of cool points for Caitlin. But nah, not 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 my partner no more. I gotta go with Jasmine on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I did to that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you slick. You slick. <laughs> but but yeah. So the last thing I want to talk about is. What is Brandon up to now? Give me all of your business ventures. How can the community and the viewers support you? What are you doing? Let us know. Okay, so my biggest thing I got going on right now, if, uh, are you gonna edit this? Yes, I'm gonna edit this. Okay, so if you wanna throw this on there, it's my, one of my best friends, oh, she's family, I keep, I keep calling her friends, like my sister. Her name is DJ PZB and she follow her at DJ PZB Live. No, actually, follow her at, at PZB Live on Instagram, Twitch, TikTok is at PZB Live. Um, go to PZBLive.com. Cali Rock ENT is the company. I'm the manager. Um, she is dope. She does it all. We um we actually the premiere for Coming to America 2 when it came on Amazon Prime. Uh we linked up with Amazon Prime and she was the official DJ for the after party after it streamed and Arsenio Hall was on there bigging us up. Uh, Big Les was on there bigging us up. Uh, Leslie Jones. Um, Eddie Murphy popped into the chat because you know it was digital so we had to go out to LA and get into the studio. They had a whole uh, setup for it and uh, you got to go watch that but go to her page you can see that stuff. We actually um, there's a movie called uh I forget the name of the damn movie. It's an animated movie that just came out on uh, on Netflix. Um, it's the Millers versus the Machines, I believe. Um, and um, we went back to that same studio. They set up something that was virtual. She did the after party for that. So she was the prime DJ for that one. For um, that, that one's on Netflix. The first one, uh, Coming to America 2 was on Amazon Prime. So we got good relationships with them. 
Uh, she just got back from doing a couple of private parties because, you know, things are opening back up. Uh, she's DJ for everybody from LL Cool J to Shaq. Uh, Yo-Yo is like our best friend. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going, man, but that, that's my main focus is getting behind that and um, being her manager. I'm making phone calls and doing Zoom uh, meetings uh, every other day just to get her some stuff, man. We did an event with um, the Apollo, the Apollo Theater uh, a couple months ago. Uh, for a women's group um, convention, about three thousand people were in the in the virtual uh, party, and it was it was great. So if anybody ever wants to join Cali Rock, let me know. I can get you some money from sitting right at your crib. So that's my biggest thing. And of course, you know, I got my nine to five. Um, don't want to say what it is, but I have my nine to five. Okay. And uh, other than that, man, just uh, taking care of my babies and uh, trying to make sure the house stays in order. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I DJ as well. If anybody oh. wants, if anybody ever wants to holler at me, yeah, I got my. Well, actually, I was just looking at some stuff uh, right now, but I got my controller right here. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, so I was messing with some stuff a minute ago. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. You can find me on Cameo uh, if you want to. Okay. Yeah, I try to get it all out there. Instagram is Brandon right. D Nelson. Uh, Facebook is Brandon Drake Nelson. Twitter is Brandon D Nelson, and TikTok is Brandon Drake Nelson. So yeah. Well, I know a lot of. So do you like create like beats or something like that? Because I know a lot of people like me, YouTube, you know, content creators, the channel community. We need we need, we need some music content, like some catchy music beats. Yeah. So do you do you do things like that? Well, actually, I've just started working on that part of it, but uh, but Peasy, she definitely does, definitely does. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can let her know, and we can get something together for you, man. Like it's uh, yeah, I, I keep telling her she needs to make a TikTok song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how much how much does she normally charge? You? How much would she charge you something like that? Like it's like a simple like for beat, like for a performance or for beats. For beats. For beat, I mean, it's, if it's just on a loop, if you just want a, a simple beat, I mean, uh, I'd have. To, let me. I, I don't want to tell you a number. Let me okay. talk to her because she might already. I know she has some already, but let me just run it by her real quick. Oh, we can be, talk about that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it shouldn't be too crazy. But yeah, okay. but yeah, we can definitely. Yeah, we can definitely figure that out. Ooh, so it's good. It's good to have Brandon that you know you're out here. You book. You're busy. Doing great. You're in great health. Life oh, is yeah. great. You have your kids. You're married, and everything seems seems great. It's it was really great to talk to you. Um, oh, thank you once again for being on and taking the time out of your busy schedule. Because, like you said, you were supposed to do this from from about January or something like that. But yeah. you, know, you got you got your things to do, and sometimes I find myself, you know, doing what I have to do over here. But we finally did it. And yeah. I think it went. I think it went very well, and I think a lot of viewers would appreciate to see the side of you and to know that you know there's more, more layers to you know reality stars, not just what they see on TV. And that's kind of what I want to present okay. to to the public. So, so yeah. With that being said, everyone, stay safe, stay sanitized, and stay sane. I am Daniel. This is Challenge Centric, and this is Brandon Nelson, and we are signing off. Oh, man.